When we think of superhero movies, we automatically think of films like Spider-Man. Go! Go! Go, Web, go! Or The Dark Knight. Now there's a Batman. But Watchmen never crosses our minds. Well, maybe not initially. Which is a shame because Watchmen is a great film by superhero movie standards. The cinematography, the fight sequences, and the almost word-for-word -word dialogue makes Watchmen one of the greatest superhero films ever made. Director Zack Snyder did a phenomenal job when it came to taking what made Watchmen, Watchmen, and putting it on the big screen. Even though he included significant details from the story, many film critics did not understand the subtle references. Many of the references or puns made at the comic threw many reviewers off, which, in return, many film critics rated the movie fairly low. One joke that did not sit well with critics was in fact the constant use of the word joke in the film. The word joke is delivered by the infamous comedian frequently throughout the original 12-issue series. But Snyder saw the repetitious remark for what it was and used it as a way to pay homage to the original material. My life is just one big joke. I don't think your life is a joke. 2009's Watchmen was extremely faithful to Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons' creation. Besides the ending of the movie, no major detail from the storyline was changed in the development of the film. Doctor, tell me, what do you see? In fact, while the film was being shot, many crew members had the novel on standby in case a certain shot or scene was questionable. The faithfulness of Snyder's work is continuously shown throughout the film. An example of this is through use of Rorschach's journal entries. Snyder ditched Gibbons' cut-and-paste method of journal entries and used Jack Earl Haley's Rorschach interpretation to keep the movie turning and the audience entertained. Rorschach's journal, October 12th, 1985. Dog carcass in alley this morning. Dire tread on burst stomach. Zack Snyder's dedication of not tarnishing Moore's name can be seen throughout Watchmen. One thing that Snyder did was he threw out the secondary color scheme of the original comic series and used a dark filter over the film to establish that the world in the Watchmen universe was grimy and dangerous, which in retrospect set the tone for future serious superhero movies. Having a darker tone or color palette helps viewers lock into the seriousness of the film, something Zack Snyder was trying to achieve. But when I searched the place, I saw nothing. And then I found her. But fitting 400 something worth of pages into a reasonable runtime comes with issues. The Watchmen novel is so intricate that making a truly faithful adaptation is physically impossible. One problem with Snyder's film is that he twisted the original format's subtle joke and made it his own, which sort of backfired. In Alan Moore's original story, the characters play a parody of what superheroes were in the 1970s and 1980s. Moore took the five types of superheroes, superpowered, vigilante, witty, gadget-influenced, and centralized, and made it into a subtle joke. The joke being that heroes would not be perfect in real life, and that they would use their powers to their advantage. What Snyder did was he made fun of past superhero films. One example of Snyder's numbered parodies is through Ozymandias' suit. Instead of using Viet's Egyptian-influenced purple and gold getup, Snyder made fun of Joel Schumacher's Batman by paying homage to Bruce Wayne's glorious nipple suit. What angered fans was that the purple and gold signified power and prestige, something Ozzy coveted. The two colors also resonated with Veet's fascination with ancient Egyptian hierarchy, a characteristic that also played off Veet as a villain. Another problem with The Watchmen is the absence of the Black Freighter storyline within the theatrical release. Not having that comic within the comic part changed the outcome of the movie completely. Black Freighter is a metaphor for what Ozzy Mandias has done. Near the end of the book, Ozzy thinks about his master plan, which draws a parallel within the Black Freighter. At the end of the novel, Black Freighter's ending tied up with Viet's final words. The last few words of the Freighter's dialogue are a metaphor for what Ozzy has done and what he has to live with as a result. Without Moore's ending, audience members do not see that Viet actually regretted what he had done. Birds were eating his thoughts and memories. Wait, yeah. Jack, get away. Yeah. Yeah. 
But if Snyder could go back in time and make an accurate account of the novel, he would need to make Watchmen a miniseries, or better yet, a television show. A television series, one that would not tarnish the christened name of Alan Moore. The show would have to start at the beginning by introducing viewers to the original Minutemen, and slowly building the original series of the Watchmen supergroup, and having the finale being the destruction of Manhattan. You know, if we lost here in Vietnam, I think it might have driven us crazy. But you can't blame Zanak Snyder, nor the writers, for the minor differences. They ultimately had to follow studios' demands and tweaks. I mean, big studio-backed films are made for the money, after all. Even though there are some minor tweaks to Alan Moore's original masterpiece, Zack Snyder's Watchmen is a piece of art, respectively. Snyder's use of dark tones and his groundbreaking storytelling ability paved the way for future serious superhero movies. The 2009 Watchmen deserves more credit than it already has. Critics need to wake up and need to see Watchmen's true face. I'm leaving this galaxy for one a little less complicated. I thought you said you cared about life again. I do.